Hey y'all, this video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. In this video, I'm going to directly answer some of your questions. Now, these are questions that I have taken from the comment section of various YouTube videos I have posted on my YouTube channel, and they were either questions that I didn't feel warranted a separate video of their own, or they were things that I forgot to address in some of my other videos. Just as a reminder, today at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session here on my YouTube channel where we can discuss anything that I've covered in this video. Again, that's today at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link to that live Q&A session in the description box of this video. And I hope to see you this afternoon. So without further ado, let's get into the first question. So our first question that came in was, how do I copy objects? And there are a couple of ways of doing it. So before we can demonstrate that, we need to get an object out here. So I'm going to go ahead and select a star. And I don't even know what this is. It's uh, five points. And we've got an outer radius of two inches. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and click one right here. And we'll close that. When an object is created, it is automatically selected. Now I can select it once again to go into move and transform mode if I need to, or I can just click off if I don't need to do that. Now there are two ways to copy an object. Either way, has, the object has to be selected. So I'll select the object, and now I have a choice. I can either right click the object, and come down here and select copy. If I look right here, I see that the keyboard shortcut is control C. Now if I look down below here, paste is control V. So I can either right click and use this menu, or I can just use the keyboard shortcut, which case I will hit control, hold down the control key and tap the letter C. Then I'll hold down the control key and immediately tap the letter V. And that pasted a copy of this star right over the top of the previous star and puts the copy into move and transform mode. Now I can put my cursor over this center square, click and drag it over here, and I now have two copies of my star. The other way I can copy is to use another keyboard shortcut. Let's say I want to copy both of these stars down here. Well, I can select both of those stars, then select once again to put them both into move and transform mode as a group. Then I can hold down the control key on my keyboard, put my cursor over the center, left click, hold, and drag down, and that creates two copies down here. So, those are the two ways of copying an object. And this can be done with a vector object, it can be done with a single open vector, it can be done with multiple vectors. All you have to do is select all of the vectors you want to copy, and then use either of the two methods I just demonstrated. Again, that's either use Control C, then Control V, or hold down the Control key after putting them in Move and Transform mode, and click and drag your copies to wherever you want to put them. My next question has to do with moving objects. As you all well know, you can select an object, then click on it again, 
and put your cursor over this center square right here and drag this object wherever you would like. But the question came in, what if I want to move this numerically to a specific location on my material? And there are a couple of ways of doing that as well. I'm going to demonstrate the easiest one of the bunch. Now, what I have going on here is I have the four stars I created a few minutes ago. And it's sitting on a piece of material that's 12 inches wide in X and 12 inches high in Y. And if you look at my X0 and Y0 lines here, you'll see they meet in the center, obviously, because I have my XY datum set to the center for layout purposes. And they divide this piece of material into quadrants. Well, suppose I want these stars placed exactly in the center of each of these quadrants. I can take a look up here at my scale, and I can see that I have 6 inches in X this way on the negative side of my X0, and 6 inches to this side on the positive side of my X0. And the same thing here in Y, 6 inches in the positive and 6 inches in the negative. So what I'll want to do is I'll want to place these on the 3 inch marks, both in X and Y. And there's an easy way of doing that. I'll just select one of my stars here, then I'll come over here under Transform Objects to this first icon and that is Move Selected Objects. Now, here we have a couple of choices to make. Number one, we'll need to figure out where we're going to anchor this object. And in this case, I want to anchor the center of the object to a known location. So, I'll make sure I've got that radio button in the center. Then, it's asking me for a type of move. Is this a move in absolute coordinates, which is what I want in this case, or is this a move that's relative to its current position? So, in other words, if I select this star and I just want to move it to the left one inch, I would select relative move. But if I want to place it in a known location on the material, I would use an absolute move. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Now, it's already giving us a few hints here. Remember the Cartesian coordinate system. Anything to the left of x0 is going to be a negative move, moving in that direction. Anything to the right is going to be a positive move, positive in this direction. The same thing down here in, with the y axis. Anything below zero is a negative move. Anything above zero is a positive move. Well, it's already giving us a few hints over here. The current x position of this star is negative 2.3725. So I know. If I want to place this in the center of this quadrant, I know it's going to be a negative number. Because remember, we're not moving this relative to its current position. We're moving this to a known location on the material. And in this case, it would be negative 3. So I would highlight that and go 3.0. Down here, the Y position is positive because it's above my zero line. And it's telling me that already because this current position is a positive number. So I would come along and just highlight those to the right of the decimal, enter a zero. Then when I click apply, it moves that star to where the center point of that star is in the center of this quadrant. And I can do the same thing with the rest of these stars. I can come over to this one, 
and I can see here that these are both positive numbers. I just want it in the center of this quadrant, so I'll go 3.0 and 3.0, click Apply. Same down here, positive 3.0, negative 3.0, then negative 3.0, negative 3.0, apply, close, and then when I click off, all of my stars are located in the center of each quadrant of my piece of material. Then, as a final finishing touch, I can select this star go into Move and Transform mode, put my cursor over the center square, hold down Control, click and drag another star right here to X0, Y0 to finish up my pattern. So you can move by selecting the object or the vector you want to move. Come over here under Transform Objects to Move selection and select absolute or relative then enter your position here if you're doing a relative move go ahead and select relative right now it's reading zero zero what it's asking you is which direction do you want to move it from where it's at now. So if I want this star one quarter inch higher up in Y, but I don't want it moved at all in X, I would leave X at zero and go Y 0.25, positive direction to move it up and click apply. If I decided that I want that back down a quarter of an inch, I'll select it. And again, make sure I have relative, and I'll change my Y position to negative 0.25, click Apply, and it put it right back down where it was before I moved it the first time. Then I can close, and everything is as I need it for my project. So, those are the ways you can move an object numerically to a known location or from its current position relative to that current position. Now my final question for this video came from a Facebook question that I saw in one of the many CNC groups that I'm a member of on Facebook. And the question was, I've just upgraded from VCarve to Aspire. I tried to import my tool database, but it's not compatible with Aspire. What do I do? The sharper right among you will notice that I have loaded my old copy of VCarve Pro 9.5. And I did this to show you where to find the files, because this is actually quite easy to do. What we'll need to do here in VCarve Pro is go up to the file menu then come down here to open the application data folder so I'll click on that and it opens up the folder where all of the application data for vcarve is located now here you can see in my case it's on my c drive program data vectric then vcarve pro then the version number now, if we look down here, we have all these files here. This one is called Tool Database, not the backups, Tool Database. Double click to go into that folder, and we have this file here, which is tools.toolDB. This is the database file that the Tool Database in my copy of vcarve pro is using this has all of my tools in it 
Now, when I upgrade to Aspire, I already did this, but I can show you how I do it. So, what I would do is select the file, then right click and select copy, which copied that entire database file to the clipboard on my computer. Then I'll minimize this, I'll minimize vCarve, go into Aspire. I'll go into the file menu, open the application data folder, and in this case, mine is my C drive, program data, Vectric, then Aspire, then in this case, version 10.0. This is the version of Aspire that I'm using right now. I come down here to my tool database folder. I'll double click it to enter. And you can see I've already done it. Here is that tool database. I just right click and select paste. Now I'm not going to do it because I've already done this. Once that is finished, I can minimize that window. Now, in Aspire, you will need to have a file open here to access your tool database. So, you'll either create a new file or open a file you already have on your computer. Then we'll go up here to Tool Paths, come down to Tool Database to load your database. Then what you would do is come down to this folder, this icon right here. Import a tool database. You'll click on that icon, then navigate to the application data folder. Again, in my case, it's the C drive, program data, Vectric, Aspire, 10.0, tool database. That's the folder I'm in. Find that tools DB folder, then click open. Now, I've already done this. I'm not going to do it again. But what will happen is all of the tools that you have in that database that are not already a part of the database you're using will be imported. Now, do know you may end up with some duplicates. Let's select as an example a uh, 90 degree V bit with a half inch cutting diameter. If any of the, the criteria here is different for some reason, for instance, let's say you have a slightly different diameter, a different number of flutes, or something similar, it may load a duplicate instance of that same bit. Because, let's just say, for instance, you don't have the number of flutes entered, which I didn't, it could add a duplicate of that bit. If the criteria here is the same on the VCAR version of the bit as it is here in a bit that's already installed in, in Aspire, and there are no notes, it will go ahead and import that tool. So if I have, in this case, I have a slightly larger V-bit, it's 9 sixteenths of an inch cutting diameter. It's got some notes on what type of bit it is. This bit has no such notes. So this bit would be imported. So if you have a quarter inch end mill from white side that you have entered notes, and you have another quarter inch end mill from a mana that you have entered notes, it will import both. So just know that there could be some duplicates here. And if you find a duplicate, it's easy just to select that duplicate and click the trash can to remove that tool. Because it's very easy to load up your database with duplicate bits if you don't pay attention. But doing it this way will import the tool database from vCarve into Aspire or from an old version 
of Aspire to a new version of Aspire. So I hope that answers that question. I simply go to the application data folder for the old version, copy the tool database, and paste it into the application data folder for the new database. Then go into the new database and use this folder icon right here to import that database. Then go through and make sure I don't have any duplicates. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for this video this week. And if this is something that you think would be a good addition to the channel, if this is something that you think you would be interested in following, leave me a comment down in the comment section. Let me know. I, I get questions from a variety of locations, and some of them I think may be of interest to everybody, some of them not so much. So if you have a question like this that you think I can answer, by all means, I'm a willing listener. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Another option would be to join us this afternoon for my live Q&A session today at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on my YouTube channel. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box below. While I'm mentioning that description box, also remember there is a link to the three most popular playlists on my channel. And that is the Vectric for Absolute Beginners series, the V Carving for Absolute Beginners series, and the 3D Carving for Absolute Beginner Series. You'll find a link to all of the playlists, every video in those series, down in the description box of this video and all of my other videos. So, I hope to see you this afternoon for that live Q&A. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.